Spoiler alert! Welcome to Spoiler Alert. I'm Ryan. And I'm Dustin. And today and is the... F- <laughs> <laughs> Jump into the pump. All right. Jumping into it. It's the 15th episode spectacular. And as Michael has said, he's back on the show. Please welcome to the show, Michael E. Cullen II. Woo! Hello, everybody. All right. So for the 15th episode spectacular, we're going to do two... um divisive to say the least topics Halloween kills Black Adam it's at this point Ryan realized he said Halloween kills when he meant Halloween ends he was totally in a hurry because he had to go to work an hour after this podcast Mm. and let's start off with what is pretty much Halloween 3 bonus content Halloween kills so I first watched this on my phone Halloween at work. Halloween ends. Halloween ends. I'm sorry, duh. Okay. That's okay, just make it sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Halloween ends. Yeah, you can tell I'm in a rush right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Well, they the were in a rush I'm... when they made the film, so... ba bum bum <laughs> All right, so the first time I watched this movie, I watched it on my phone at work. And... When I first watched it on my phone at work, I'm like, I don't like this. And then there's that nagging part in the back of my head that's like, Ryan, you watch this on your phone. You need to watch this on a bigger screen. And so, given that it's on Peacock, I watched it on my 55-inch TV. And the second time around, it's actually not that bad. So the moral of the story is, never, ever, ever watch a big-ticket movie for the first time on your phone at work. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, so much to say. Listen, I I agree with you that you should never watch a big ticket film on your phone. You should never watch any film for the first time on your phone. Maybe even not the second time around. You sh- you shouldn't watch it on your phone, right? We, we yeah. I, I'm I'm against that, but I got I'm gonna have to disagree. I saw Halloween ends in the theater last night, and I am so fucking appalled. I am so appalled. Ooh. I'm appalled. I cannot hmm. believe I cannot believe that someone who cares about horror, who fought to get this license, uh, who went out of their way to get Jamie Lee Curtis, Jason Blum, allowed this thing to be made. What kind of a finale is this? Uh, Michael Myers is in a uh, a fucking sewer the whole time where some other kid runs around and kills people. I don't. I don't know. I mean, yeah. he's there sometimes. Is he not still there? Has more screen. He, he still has uh, more um, um, more screen time than he does in the original 1978 film. So crazy. So yeah. crazy. <laughs> and I, and I, I think that just goes to show you, like, why? Why did why? Why did you do this? Why did you do this to us? I, I at first it plays like one of those weird late 80s, early 90s entries where the killer is somewhere within this other person is maybe the killer or they're inside their body or what? No explanation. This thing is worse than uh Halloween two Rob zombie. Just going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Though I will say like the Rob zombie movies are kind of getting a reevaluation right now. Sure. Hmm. But listen, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't agree there at all because I think Halloween two Rob Zombies is like the worst film in the whole franchise. So. This one yeah. to me, it feels like a spiritual, spiritual cousin or brother or incest fucking something or other on this one. This one to me, I just, I, I, I stayed with it. I was like, okay, we had Halloween twenty eighteen. Um, I thought they kind of rushed through that a little bit, but I was a fan. Then the second one, Halloween Kills, I actually was a fan of that one too. I thought it was cool to explore the town people, town people, townspeople, and um, have him out there just slaughtering people. Thought it was great. And then they 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 have it all teed up for this emotional, uh, brutal finale. And the guy's in a fucking sewer while a teenager runs around and kills people. I don't. I just don't. If you guys can maybe explain yeah. it to me, maybe I could. Maybe I could find peace. Yeah. So, so there are good things about this. Like, 
I kind believe it or not, I actually like the direction this took, wherein it's someone else doing the killing. And I felt we'll get more when we talk about towards the end. Like, that was a good idea that was poorly executed. Because if you think about it, the town of Hanfield's pretty evil, as it's set up in Halloween Kills. I, I agree with you, Ryan. I mean, my, my thing is, it's like, it's a lot like how, if you've seen Halloween 4, how they totally set it up for Halloween 5 that Jamie Lloyd was going to be the killer. And they were going to kind of pass the baton and then the studio decided, hey, we don't want to do that. So then they did whatever the fuck five and six were. Mm. And mm -hmm. um, I, I liked this idea totally of taking the evil and kind of transplanting it into another person. And I, I, I liked I liked about, I don't know, maybe three fourths of this movie. I actually liked. But a lot of it, I think, would have worked better as a standalone horror film that had no connection to Halloween. Yeah. It's like I always say, you take Halloween 3 out of Season of the Witch, it's considered an all-time classic. Because I yeah. unapologetically love Halloween 3. I just bought the 4K from Scream Factory's Shocktober sale. And that those are the things that work well. Like, how starting with the opening scene, whereas Corey, our main character for most of this film, is the babysitter of this bratty kid who, quite frankly, deserved what he got... Yeah, the kid sucks. Well, yeah. I don't know. I babysat a lot of brandy kids, and I never wished any of them dead. I'm just... <laughs> no, well, did they, did they like... lock you in an attic? Um, not quite that bad. No. <laughs> yeah. I, this I, I kid was like amplified when they were babysitting me. But um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that kid sucked. What was his name? Fucking uh, Jeremy or something? Yeah, and it's, it's set up so Corey. It's set up so that Corey accidentally didn't realize he killed him like he's in complete shock a character you can compare this to is arthur fleck from joker who really doesn't start out evil he prides himself on his clown job but the way he gets treated the just escalates his foray into evil and that's why i like that Corey character and i like the idea of passing the baton to somebody yeah, but it doesn't. It just feels disjointed. It, th to me, this feels like back in 2018. Hey, y'all, we got J.B. Lee Curtis coming back one last time. We're doing three movies with three cool titles: Michael Myers versus you know Laurie Strode in Haddonfield. Three rounds done, and then the first round cool, second round cool, third round what? Here comes this random character out of left field, and I agree with you. Like on paper. This this would have looked great if the seeds for Corey were laid in the first Halloween 2018, but they weren't. This just came even, out of even fucking if he was left a background field. character. Exactly. And you know what? Yeah. There is no excuse because as Michael just eloquently put, even if he's a background character, they did some fine work with background characters in this in this trilogy. And they and Corey was nowhere to be found. But yet in this third movie, he gets the opening scene. Uh, where we think a kill's coming, and it does in the form of a bratty fucking punk kid. But um, it was Corey who accidentally killed. And then all of a sudden, the movie's about him. It just feels like such a betrayal, I think, and it feels like such a sharp left turn that I just don't think that combined with the fact that this kid gets tossed around, then he gets dragged into a sewer hole with Michael Myers, who for some reason doesn't kill him. And then when he touches his head to like i don't know connect yeah. with him or something all the memories go back and forth and transfer or something i mean this thing is not clear it's muddy as fuck and it's just this like kid that we feel sorry for that somehow turns randomly turns into the killer there's no lead up there's no seeds planted mm -hmm. it's just disjointed as fuck it feels yeah. like something literally going off the rails but then there's another good thing I like about this movie. The fact that Laurie Strode chooses to move on with her life and write her book. Yeah. Because I wouldn't necessarily like the idea of Jamie Lee Curtis saying Sarah Connor Laurie Strode throughout the entirety of the film. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I loved that twist. 
and I think it was a fine twist because we've seen we've seen all versions of Laurie Strode. Like, I just don't. There's something about I think I think Halloween. I think it's the curse of Michael Myers, right? You got a good thing going, and then in the next movie, what do you do? You fucking blow it. Remember what they did after H two O? They did Resurrection, yeah. where they just killed mm-hmm. off Laurie Strode in the first act. Yeah, they should have yeah. just. Ended and then the Busta Rhymes yeah. like does martial arts moves and shit. Right. It just doesn't. None of it. None of this to me. If I'm Jason Blum, if I'm the director, if I'm the writer, um, if I'm Kenny Powers, can't think of his name right now. Excuse me, but Danny um, McBride. Right, Danny McBride. If I'm any of these talented people who shepherded the the first one in 2018, the second one in in last year in 21, why would you? Why do this in 22? I honestly think that the first and the second ones are disjointed too. I don't think that they really mesh well together. There isn't like a, they, they both have their own kind of like feeling, like almost like they're in different genres. Um, I'll give you that. Yeah. I yeah, agree. yeah. And, and I, I think that, that that's the problem with this series is like each one has that. And I, maybe that's what they were going for, but they did kind of go way off left field. Like you're saying on this one compared to the other two. But I think the, the first one, had a lot of build up and a lot of good stuff going for it. Maybe not enough character development, but um, the second one had no character development whatsoever. And I didn't give a shit about anybody. It was just like, Oh, yeah. cool kills. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's like, I, I kind of need to care. Like where this one, I actually did kind of start to understand the people that died, at least in this one, a little more like, you know, you, you know, you know, the people that Corey or Michael kill in different times. Yeah. You know? And, you and I are on the same wavelength here, Michael, because that's why I was going to say, like, Halloween Kills is just pandering fan service to me. Just Michael yeah. Myers, unhinged, mm-hmm. all bets are off. Like, the movie, these toxic assholes who are starting petitions to demand a reshoot for Halloween Ends want. Yeah, the the the, the, the people that are, are, I think that they own Hollywood just because they got Sonic changed. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those but guys. Ba- basically, that, I mean, you, you, you give them a nugget and they're like, oh, I need the whole freaking mountain. But they, uh, but, but like, it, it's, yeah, ha- Halloween, Halloween Kills was just murder. That's all it was the whole time. And it's like. There's a place for that. I mean, I, I don't I mean, I thought it was a fun movie. Don't get me wrong. I didn't dislike it. Mm-hmm. But out of the three, it's actually my least favorite. Well, what did what did we want from because this is this is a larger question. What did we want from Halloween Kills? Isn't that what we I mean, I remember people saying, oh, my God, they're advertising that it's like triple the body count, maybe quadruple of the first one. This is going to be great. And then we get in there and everybody bitches. So I, I don't know, like I'm not saying you're bitching, but I'm saying what no. is it that we as fans, what is what did we want from Kills? Did we want more lore? Did we want more mythology? Because in the first one in Halloween 2018, I saw it and I liked it a lot, but it felt quick. It felt too clean. It felt like uh, they were just ripping off the Band-Aid or whatever quickly for more movies. And what I didn't like about the first one is that there was no hint or question or any sort of wink as to why Michael Myers could take bullets to the eyeballs and still get up and murder somebody. And I didn't like that. So maybe and then he's kills... able to die in this one. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. Because it, it's it's like, is he supernatural or not? I mean, obviously this one answers that he's not, you know, or right. like he's not a, you know, he's not like a zombie or something like, you know, Jason Voorhees or something. But it's kind of right. Like, just fucking tell us what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but like, is that what you what you would say is missing for you from kills? Is that there's just nothing but just bloodshed or because yeah, because I mean, my thing is, is I, I like original kills. I mean, I'm, I've directed two horror films that had weird kills in them. Mm-hmm. But um, the, uh, you know, I don't know, real low budget, but still the uh, the thing, the thing with it is, though, is like I actually like to care about the people that are being killed. I mean, you can have your random one offs here yeah. and there, but I feel like we didn't even really get to know Judy Greer's character well enough for me to care that she died. Right. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. 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 It's it's really strange. I don't know. I mean, I would imagine when when they laid it out in the Blumhouse offices that there was an overarching plan for all three films. I just don't know how we got here. How are we having a conversation about 
what the first one is widely celebrated regardless of what we think of it right um and we can all have our nitpicks and whatever it is but then these last two and again i i would venture to say that <laughs> that kills is probably my favorite of the three just because i like seeing michael just fucking off the chain just losing it um yeah, i mean the kills are awesome and it's it, it's a good yeah. gore movie but it's just yeah, not enough sure. character development for yeah liking. but i think david gordon green knew exactly what he was doing with this movie by using the halloween three season of the witch font by saying like look yeah. we're gonna go left field with this one sure hope you like it and i think i but think he didn't that go far enough no, he didn't. You're right. Yeah. He he went. He swerved left and then pulled it back to the right towards the end because it's like yeah. the fucking radio guy and shit. It just seems so corny. Like when did he set the tower on fire? All that stuff, right? But then I, I'm I'm confused as to when the switchover was that he's like, oh, I'm gonna kill people now because he's and in that hole with Michael. And there seems to be some sort of memory sharing thing going on. So was he transferring the evil? Why is he so weak, right? Why is Michael Myers yeah. so weak? And ultimately, why did he not just rip Corey's guts out in the beginning? <laughs> Those are yeah, a lot of unanswered a... questions. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. There should be Very like... Bad. How the fuck did Corey get off on that clear child murder? Yeah, that, no, he must His father must be one hell of a fucking mechanic. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he had Matt Murdock. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> or Jennifer. And another question I have is <laughs> why the fuck is Lori's granddaughter in love with this dweeb? That's like me all of a sudden dating Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria. Like, well, and no, she's like I don't buy it for a shit. second. And, and the guy she was seeing before him was kind of like a dopey cop guy that was like an asshole. Right, so he looked like twenty years it, older than her. Yeah, he, he it looked like. I mean, it was just like you know, he looked old enough to be her dad. Yeah, yeah, he really did. <laughs> and it's so ridiculous to go from go see this awkward dweeb who's scared of his own shadow dating Laurie Strode's <laughs> granddaughter of all fucking people. I mean, it, it could be that she's a basically what they were trying to imply in certain ways is that she's a flawed person, and so yeah, she, that's what I thought. And, yeah. and that's why. Yeah, I but mean, it, they, it doesn't. She, feel might, right. she might be more like yeah. stereotypically attractive than he is, but still, you know. But then again, yeah. he, he's not. I mean, he's. I, I'm don't look at dudes, but he's not really that unattractive. He's not like. It's not like it's like Dustin Diamond or something. It's like, <laughs> you know, it, it, it would have been better more, if it was probably Dustin closer, Diamond. Yeah, closer right? to Mark Paul Gosselin than. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'm reimagining Diamond. the whole fucking <laughs> thing being redone with Dustin Diamond <laughs> in character as screeched. I would fucking pay good money to see a Halloween movie. True with story. True Diamond story. Screech. I true story. I went to go see Bring Me the Horizon last Saturday, and there was this band called Knocked Loose. This was a band I really wanted to like musically, but then their guy was like, was. Screaming like Screech from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> this is... I'm dead fucking serious. I want to see a fucking circle pit! I want you guys to get fucking rowdy! And I am, like, laughing my ass off this entire time. I'm like... And he just sounds like Screech throughout every single song he does. You have this hardcore-ass band. Like, doing the chug-a-lug bullshit. Doing the chug-a-lug... I mean, just <laughs> just imagine Dustin Diamond as Screech getting pulled into that sewer pipe by Michael. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's what they need to do. And I, I was talking with my, my Uber driver after the movie, and he's like, what did you see? And I told him and told him what I thought. He's like, man, that's just really unfortunate. He's like, why don't they pull a Marvel and just start getting all these characters together? I'm like, right? Exactly. Exactly. Jesus Christ, you guys want the I actually like Freddy versus Jason. I know that's a controversial opinion, but I like Freddy versus Jason. It's a good, it's a, it's a good movie. I mean, I I think that they should do some more stuff like Freddy versus Jason. Um it's just I mean a lot of the things too. I mean you, you can't really do it too much longer because Robert England's getting up there if you right. do Freddy with him, you know, you, you got to do it with him because, you know, yeah, I mean, right. Jackie early Earl Haley was okay, but it the yeah. um, but but like it would be interesting to see, like, you know, Ash from the Evil Dead versus Michael Myers or something, but it's yeah. 
it, it's 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 kind of complicated when you got all these different studios. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah I mean, they uh, all and everywhere they all together. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's just to me is like there's no i get it right like we we want the slasher films but we want like a sprinkle of mythology in there like we want you're not going to give us a reason why this asshole keeps taking anvils to the fucking groin and shit and keeps getting back up at least give us like a couple of options that we can figure we can think of it ourselves right and i think that you know the mo the mythology probably is the most explored in nightmare on elm street but Halloween, I mean, you know, they had the fucking Thorn trilogy or whatever they tried to pull off with four, yeah, five, and, they, and six. They, they, they tried to pull it off. Yeah. They just blew it. And that and, and and that's the thing is like how how do you go into this uh in twenty eighteen with um what's his name again? Sorry, Kenny Powers. David Gordon Green. Da no, David Gordon Green and then uh Kenny Powers guy. Uh Danny, Danny McBride. McBride. Yeah, right. Danny yeah. McBride, his writing company, Jason Blum, and you come out with, I just don't understand. You can look back on what, fucking nine, ten fucking Halloween movies and be like, these are the ones that blew, these are the ones that whatever, and the director wants to do this, where's the middle ground? And they just don't, they don't go there. They go so left and off the beaten path. I, it's, it's almost like th there was three movies uh, that are were roped into one. There's like a romantic thing going on with the cherry blossoms and 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 uh, Lori Strode having a new a new life. There's the unavenged death of her daughter, right? Um, that's happening. There's the recovery of her granddaughter, and then there's Michael mm -hmm. Myers. And then to sprinkle all that in, you have this Corey thing now. Who the yeah. fuck Greenland? Honestly, honestly, I would have been happy if there was no Michael Myers in this movie at all. Yeah, that goes they, to my next they, point. Then they would have had a point, and then also I think the the way they should have gone was like a natural born killer sort of way with uh with with Allison and Corey. Yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. yeah, that goes to my next point. I fucking hated the ending. Like, mm -hmm. I think it would have been way cooler if Corey were Michael Myers throughout the entire film, but yeah. Because fans would probably whine and moan, we had to have Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers face off. And it just feels extremely rushed. Like, their on-screen fight together only lasts about, like, maybe four minutes and feels like a complete and total afterthought. It because really is. It, it goes somewhere really interesting where Lori Strode is out planning to kill herself. And then you see the splat. You see the bam, and then it turns out to be pumpkin goo, and then Michael Myers shows up. <laughs> right, but like, if you're breaking in someone's house to kill someone, and they do a fake out where they kill themselves, I mean, I, I'm yeah. confused. I mean, what the fuck, dude? Who's writing like, this? Who was yeah. she trying to fool us that I didn't get? Um, yeah. Also, I, I think that it might have been interesting if they took a, a route where – we sympathized with Corey and we didn't see the whole aspect of him killing people. We just saw the murders happening and we did kind of a, like, uh, what is it? The um, Friday the 13th new beginning where we mm -hmm. find out it's a different person. Like later on, like the mask comes off and it's like, uh oh, it's been Corey this whole time. And then right, because or, he, yeah. In the trailer, they made a big deal about the mask being taken off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that they paraded the body through the streets and that everyone, well, we're not supposed mm -hmm. to be doing this. This is Haddonfield. Like, I love that. I thought that was cool. <laughs> um, you know, however, I mean, the guys terrorized Haddonfield for 40 years. Uh, so I so yeah. I get it. And I'm there and I'm there for it. I love that fucking uh, bullshit, right? Fucking vigilanteism shit. It's sort of a follow through from the second movie, right? They all went bonkers and now they're meeting up to watch this guy get fucking fried um, or put through the ringer literally. But the yeah. thing is, is is like, I thought what, what was happening is with this Corey dude is those kids were fucking terrorizing him, right? And I thought what was going to happen is he was going to start to turn the corner, be happy with what's her name and then he was going to be in a situation where Michael Myers shows up 
and those fucking punk ass kids are about to get it and he just doesn't help them he just lets them die that's what i yeah. thought we were going towards and then yeah. it would be some some fucking guilt thing where he's like oh should i tell my girlfriend or not and then michael myers shows up and kills everybody but it it wasn't that so so the first film we have a Lori versus Michael thing where it's all about Michael and Lori. The second movie, Lori's in the hospital. Michael kills everyone. It's literally called Halloween kills. And then the third movie, Michael has low blood sugar. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what, <laughs> like, well, I'm not really sure. The title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I mean, ha- Halloween, Halloween, low, low blood sugar, <laughs> Halloween LBS. You know yes. what I mean? Like what the fuck is going on? The guy's like making weird noises and he's underground for two, four, for four years. What the <laughs> fuck? I know. But the main question is, where does this go after Halloween ends? Because oh, they're done. there's talk. There's talk of continuing the Halloween franchise, especially well, after got, Michael they're, they're, Myers. They're, they're, they're going to. I mean, they're just going to have totally. to like, reboot it again or something. Um, yeah. They, 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 can't, they can't continue any of the 93 timelines that they have. But um, the, uh, the, um, they, they, they'd have to like restart from the beginning, kind of like Zombie tried to do. Mm-hmm. But, but, but I, I think that the best way to do it is just get rid of Laurie Strode altogether create yeah. a new, yeah. new yeah. instance like still have michael because he's an icon you know or something like that or maybe even just have another killer that wears the captain kirk mask and um you know does what he's got to do you know so or maybe just get william shatner to fucking stumble around and yeah. kill people you know what i mean <laughs> did, did, did you know that when he found out that that mask was him because he didn't know right away he went out with his kids trick-or-treating one year dressed up as michael myers Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and he killed everyone. Um, no, I think mm-hmm. it's I, I think it's great. I think I think that they they should they should start over. I don't think they should continue. I think maybe you know that's a tough one. I think you because you really. I mean, in two years from now, you don't want to just throw the thing back in Haddonfield and have Michael running around. I mean, you have to. There has to be some new element to it. That's why if they wanted to continue this thread, they shouldn't have killed Corey. Mm. Yes. It's a great point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they just sort of jam the torpedoes mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like fucking her granddaughter is like, fuck you, grandma. You, you're the problem. You ruin everything. And then she like shows up and she's like, oh, my God, you killed my boyfriend. And then she runs off and then she gets down the street and she's like, the radio tower is on fire. And she just randomly decides to turn around. Yeah. It's really the, bad. Another moral of the story. If you may or may not have killed someone, drop the fucking knife. For real. <laughs> For real. In both instances with yeah. with Corey and then Lori Strode. It just really, it was just a really weird thing to like with the the couple with the kid in the beginning, and the dad's like kind of being a dick to Corey, and the mom's like friendly. And it's like he hears Michael Myers at night, and he's scared, and then that doesn't go anywhere, and he kid gets killed. It's just like a really weird sort of like jambalaya fucking of of like ten different kind of Halloween movies. They had more writers on this than they did the other two. Mm. And I think that that contributed to it because it's like too many cooks in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it, and, and I think a lot of it had to do there, – there were a lot of reshoots on this too. And and also the, 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 the fact of the lack of cohesion, cohesion between the whole trilogy, when they made the first one, they didn't know they were making the second two. Um, that was greenlit after the weekend box office. They had yeah. to have an idea, though. They probably had ideas, but my thing is, is that they probably didn't know for sure because horror always sells, but it was still like they they were fucking with uh, royalty, you know. So true. Like, yeah. No, they, they really were. Um, yeah. Okay, so Michael, let's start with you. Out of five, what would you give Halloween ends? Three. <laughs> and you, Dustin. Out of five, uh, mm. oh man, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to give this fucking thing a zero. Oh, 
will go in the no stars, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, uh, fuck I'm going to go 3.5 out of 5 on this one. Wow. Because there are things I do love about this movie. Yeah. And then again, it's the season of the witch fan in me True. that gave this the second chance. But everything is so poorly executed. I like that little kid's body hitting the floor. Yeah. yeah. Everyone did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck that kid. Yeah. I, fuck I, I probably would have given it a three, three and a half if I didn't know we could do halves. But yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can go ahead and do three point five. Yeah, I'll do three point five as well. Not the copy, right. but I, I definitely. I love I definitely, that we're also like yeah. uh, that. I'm like over on an island by myself. I love this. This is fucking great. <laughs> I love this too. It happens All sometimes. Right. All the weather. No. <laughs> It's now really let's cold. pivot. Now let's pivot to the next movie that just came out, and with and the film that is the fate of Warner Brothers Discovery, Black Adam. Okay, so remember the whole "Don't worry, darling" controversy. I planned mm. to do a spoiler alert on that, but a lot of shit was crazy in that time frame. I saw "Don't worry, darling." I completely forgot about it. But it's basically every the movie from the 90s combined into one movie. The Matrix, The Truman Show. Yeah, I, haven't, I, I actually didn't see Don't Worry Darling at all. Me either. I, yeah. I don't know if I ever will. It just didn't really interest me. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, the trailer for it was really good. I was like, oh, this looks pretty interesting. No, and the then the whole drama great. shit came out. And then... David Zaslav's cutting all these projects off, leaving the potential Oscar contender, which it's no longer an Oscar contender, and Black Adam, the movie with The Rock that'll do gangbusters in China. <laughs> and speaking of, how about that news of James Gunn and Peter Saverin becoming the new DC heads? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a great choice, but uh, it's very weird to me. I don't personally. Them. No, yeah, my God. nobody wanted this job because you have a certain sect of fandom who will attack you if you even so much as negatively imply his name. They will dig shit up on you quicker than you can say Mike Cernovich. <laughs> I don't blame James Gunn or Peter Safran, and I think, honestly, having a filmmaker head DC is a great choice. And Someone a producer, better than... because they basically got both sides of the thing there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then just five minutes before I sent you the Zoom link, Zack Snyder, Henry Cavill was doing an interview, and then Zack Snyder said to Henry Cavill he'd love to work with him again. Asked him some trivial little question about the flying scene on Man of Steel while he was on the set of Rebel Moon. And that's already getting people somewhat excited. Which cuts to the chase. Henry Cavill is back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you told me, I was like, are you sure? And you're like, yeah, man, it's been leaked. I'm like, what? And then it, yeah. You know, Fucking Grace I, Randolph. I still smiled when I when I saw it. Uh, yeah. How could you not? You know? Yeah. And then there was that one dude who was in the theater and his reaction was being filmed. I saw this on Twitter. Let's go! And I was like, Motherfucker, if you were in the same theater I was, I would have personally thrown your ass out and broke your cell phones. Yeah, oh my god, I would love to see that, actually. And he's just like, yeah, let's go, let's go, in the most obnoxious, overacted way possible. Like he knew he was being on, recorded on camera. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, the, the superhero hype, um, I'm actually looking at it right now, the tagline or the name of the article is, Henry Cavill is excited to play an enormously joyful Superman. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, and going back to what I'm saying about how nobody wanted to be the DC head, because 
a certain sect of fandom, I'm not going to name names, will take it as negative. <clears throat> He's saying shit that's more in character with Snyder's Superman. Like, nobody's been this scared of a threat this wild or some shit like that. Yeah. Oh, God. I still think he felt like the same Superman from the Snyder film. You know, it's yeah, just... exactly. He still felt they just Snyder fans just want him to show up in the black suit, have him say "fuck the world," and then snap Black Adam's neck. I mean, I just don't. <sighs> I just fucking can't do it. I can't, can't. I just can't. Like, I feel like. This shit is making it like me not want to fucking be involved in any of this stuff anymore. It's like I feel like I have to have an opinion one way or the other. I feel like I have to stand up for this. I have to feel it's like Jesus Christ. I love yeah. I used to love going to the movies and shit. And now it's like like it's like politics. It, it's politics, but it's also like this like guilt factor of what you should or shouldn't like, or because you like this, now you like this too. It's like, dude, yeah. Jesus Christ, no. no. I didn't fucking vote for Donald Trump. I never will. And I also, in addition, uh, you know, the fucking the Zack Snyder's bullshit is kind of mediocre to me. Fuck off. Like, I don't know what, you know? Well, it, it, it's just like I, I went one time somebody years ago told me like it was a Ohio State Michigan weekend and I was in Toledo, which is right on the border. So they were like, oh, who do you who are you voting? Who, who are you rooting for? And I was like, well, I guess I kind of like Michigan, but I don't really care. And they got so pissed at me. Like, oh, I'm yeah, caring. I'm just yeah. like, am I supposed to <laughs> having been an Ohio State fan all my life? Oh, God, I can't stand Michigan fans. <laughs> and yeah, but you like, wouldn't string somebody up by the fucking ankles because they don't have an that. opinion. Oh my god, that, yeah. that's what that's what I'm talking about. He didn't say I fucking love Michigan and Ohio State sucks fucking yeah. dick. He just said I don't really care either way. They're like grab his ankles, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and and, and th then he then even with the opinions, like I was working on a blockbuster video years ago, and I literally had to break up a fight in the line when, when people were trying to rent movies because one guy was wearing a Michigan jersey and the other guy was wearing an ohio state t-shirt and they started fighting and i'm just like what the fuck is going on? oh dude i've been in the bar i've been in the bar industry uh i was in the bar industry like i used to throw parties and all that shit for like 15 years and every year on that night like your night was dependent on whether or not ohio state won and and the thing is, is if they won you had one set of problems to look forward to and if they lost you had an opposite yeah. set of problems to look forward to and it was always like a thing and i get it like celebrate be yeah. bummed if they lose i'm totally there I'm, a, I'm an ohio state fan too but like if someone says they're a michigan fan like i don't like kick them in the nuts or whatever and if someone's like i don't really care i'm like yeah right on so it's like but, but like but like you're you know. saying too that same energy is like now gotten over into film and tv it's like specifically it's comic book bad. movies and oh, yeah. yeah and pop culture zeitgeist shit like star wars and all that and yeah, it gets frustrating shitty. at times because when james gunn was announced the huge snyder fans were having meltdowns going off that bullshit breitbart article of how he's a pedophile because he attended he hosted a pedophile themed party <laughs> per, per that faulty logic Zack Snyder beats his wife, mm -hmm. kidnaps minors, grooms women, all because he had Amber Heard, Ezra Miller, and Jared Leto back for Justice League reshoots during a pandemic. All right. Yep. That faulty bullshit can go the other way. I, that guilt by association bullshit pisses me off. <sighs> it, it, so let's get to the movie making, at hand. Making, making, making jokes are just as bad as actual actions and are sometimes worse in certain people's minds yeah it's yeah <laughs> or how snyder fans epically misunderstand like the big justice league cameo at the end in which he's like oh now they got now they now aquaman fucks fish in this world motherfucker the crux of peacemaker's character is he takes everything literally <laughs> oh. that being said let's just cut to the chase of the movie it's perfectly fine. 
It's not a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes movie. Quite frankly, this and Love and Thunder need to switch tomato meter ratings. Mm. Michael, you can go. I'm just saying, I don't know. I The, the thing is, is I actually probably had about the same reaction to both this and Love and Thunder. The, the feeling that it was fun, but not great. You know, that's yeah. basically how I felt about both of them. Yeah. So. I'm on fine. Like, it's not good, not great. It's fine. Yeah, it's definitely not good. It's definitely not great. I guess it's kind of fine. Uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson fucking kills it. Uh, Pierce Brosnan uh, fucking kills it. Love that. Love them both. Um, yeah. I would just watch those two on a road trip, just screaming at each other. I mean, that you know, whatever. Yeah. The the rest of I thought the, Aldous, I thought Aldous Hodge stole the movie though. That's just me as Hawkman. Yeah. Yeah, but he I'm was. A big, I'm a big Leverage fan, and I love mm. him from that show. So right. I'm, I'm biased. Yeah, me too. So, I love Leverage. He's I just found actor. out they have a new spinoff show of Leverage too. Oh yeah, no, I watched that, and it, the, the second season's coming out soon. I moderate, I moderate a Leverage fan group on Facebook, so I'm like really that nice. So yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. Albus Hodge is getting his shine though. But yeah, I mean, it, it was just like. You know those movies where it's like a crowd of people yelling and it's like some guy yelling like we're not going to go stand for this and then like an hour and a half later is a crowd of people yelling and it's a guy saying we're not going to stand for this and it's the same guy in the same shirt. This is literally that movie. Yeah. And it's but like there are there, you're, there there are pieces like the connection with Shazam, I will say the cameo, the cameos are so well done in this. Nothing feels weird or disjointed. Uh, Waller, Waller fits in there. Excellent. Um, Amelia Harcourt. Amelia Harcourt, probably one of like the most yeah. seam seamlessly well put together cameos uh, and, ever. And, and, and then and, and they know. work even if you haven't seen the other. Uh, exactly. You, you know, mm -hmm. you know, their their presence, even if you've never seen the other project. Yeah. The wizard stuff, the Shazam stuff, great. The decision to like for him to like turn himself in and like go to a fucking prison then just to have somebody undo it fifteen minutes later is really shitty to me. I don't I mean yeah. again, it's just whatever. But you know, the the other the Adam Smasher and the Wind Lady severely Cyclone. under Yeah, so Cyclone, Jesus. The fucking uh Severely underused, yeah. not sure why we needed them. Yeah, especially Adam Smasher. Oh my god, that just screamed non union equivalent Ryan Reynolds. Totally. It felt as if Walter Hamada said, Yeah, we need. Can you get Ryan Reynolds for this, Dwayne? Uh, Ryan Reynolds is extremely <laughs> busy right now. Um, get his not union equivalent. Uh, right. Rose Dart. It, it, oh, Santino, who's that? Perfect. It was basically like let's take Deadpool and Ant Man and combine them. Right. That's basically what it felt like. You know, it was like yeah, and yeah. Them, and, and, and then also take elements elements of Peter Parker and the Flash and throw those all in there, and you're like you know so right. And there's there's no character develop development for him, but there's less for fucking Cyclone, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it's like. You know, she just kind of flies around and it's just sort of like scenery. It's really yeah. bizarre. There, there's no Cyclone was written in last minute. Um, um it was supposed to be Hawk Girl. It was oh, supposed okay. to be Hawk, but uh, something happened like with rights issues or something, and so they changed yeah. it to Cyclone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then, like, when they take off in the fucking jet or whatever, like, the entire yard maze, like, comes apart, and it's just, like, <laughs> it just feels really bad. Like, I don't know, if you maybe if you would have taken those two characters out, uh, if you would have taken out the cornball -y shit, made it a slightly more grounded, uh, this movie would have been excellent. You Use yeah, the extra budget is... and the extra time to look at Dwayne Johnson as a character, Pierce Brosnan as a character. I mean, come on. For me, where this film works is when it's more in tone with Snyderverse. When Dwayne Johnson is turning his enemies into skeletons, doing badass shit like putting grenades into mouths and shit. Like, it's yeah, when it gets cool. intense. Or the 
or how Kandak reacts to the Justice Society of America, which, quite frankly, they should have been the villains. Because if they went with that angle, it would have went, it would have been a four out of five for me if they stayed with that out angle. But we had to get the wildly generic villain, the mm -hmm. in the fight, who might as well oh. just be called Mr. Bad Guy for how generic <laughs> yeah. he is. Steppenwolf in Justice League is more of a threat than this guy is. Exactly. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it, it, it's kind of like um, it, it's like they they somebody in in the writers' room watched Joss Whedon's um Avengers movie and threw that in there too, like the the not just the, that the... Justice League because at least the Avengers yeah. is good. Yeah, but 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 what I'm saying is they they took they they took the wrong notes when they were when they were m making the notes from Avengers, like they 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 said oh we're gonna try these these different elements that work really well in Marvel, but right. don't necessarily work well in DC. I mean DC's problem has always been the same thing from day one. They're playing catch up they're introducing fucking characters with no background no setup so therefore mm -hmm. nothing feels earned nothing feels earned every fucking movie is a brand new team every single movie there are no movies leading up to a team oh you you had a fucking man of steel movie how about a donna justice and then immediately followed by justice like and then how about a harley quinn and the fucking birds of prey oh and how about the justice society uh where, what else can we do here uh like it's just these team up movies with no like Dude, we don't know where Adam Smasher came from. He got a fucking call from Fonzie in the back of a car. Fucking yeah. cycle. Whatever. I mean, like, <laughs> and like the most phoned no. in fucking cameo ever. Like Henry Winkler was like, okay, here's the suit. No, exactly. Bye. I got to yeah. do Barry. He, he, right. He and had, then, he had one of his grandkids set up Zoom so he could do the do the scene that's basically what it looked like. that's exactly what it was they just put the money in his fucking <laughs> paypal for sure and here the problem the problem with it is like even say what you will about marvel ryan say what you will about marvel ryan but like even characters i don't want to see like for instance the one marvel movie out of phase the first four phases that i had no uh the only one I didn't see in theaters was Ant was Ant Man because I'm like, what a dumb character! They're never going to make this work. And then again, I when it comes out finally on digital, I see it on digital, and I fucking ate my words because they took their time with a two hour twenty minute movie, walking through the legacy of Ant Man, setting it up. He earns the fucking suit. It's Make funny, terrible, exactly. And it, with DC, it's just like, hey, Adam Smasher. And that's it. That's exactly. That's what they, they really should have actually introduced Black Adam in like the second Shazam movie, and then oh. given him his own movie. Exactly yeah. would have made. But the thing is, and... it's not sucking the Rock's dick hard enough. Like exactly. there are lines in this where I'm just like, oh my god, Dwayne Johnson, get out of your fucking way! Like the <laughs> the little kid is like, you're ripped like Aquaman, and uh -huh. then there are moments where like. If you've seen the Simpsons episode with Poochie, and Homer gives the notes of whenever Poochie is not on screen, all the characters should ask, where's Poochie? In this case, it's, where's Black Adam? And it does it numerous times. Mm -hmm. And then they just take him off the canvas for like 20 minutes or whatever. Not 20 minutes, but like, it felt like it. <laughs> when he's in the, when he's in his like underwater prison. It's... Oh, it's so stupid, man. And if, if that's all it took to wake him up, I mean, remember when they fucking killed off Johnny Depp's character in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and like immediately following she's in a boat and she's like, I shouldn't have done that. Like, that's, ex that's exactly what this feels like. It mm -hmm. feels like this this weird. Uh, we ran out of money. We need to break the movie up a little bit because of all the reshoots. And yet they don't go to any other character. They go to a little bit to Pierce Brosnan. And and the mm -hmm. other thing with DC is like, you know, I would argue in, in, in superhero cinema today, the bold thing to do is to keep people alive. The easy thing to exactly. do is, is to kill people because yeah. in all the old 80s and 90s films, you knew that that character... Uh, 
the villain was going to die but mo- but a lot of the times the character that the main character cared about was going to die so that w- those were easy and so when marvel came out and they didn't kill loki at the end of it and he came back and came back again and whatever it's like wow they're actually telling a story about someone who's conflicted they're actually telling a story about someone who was an asshole but for some reason now like every kid's dressed as, as him as halloween that's hard that is hard to do. DC is mm-hmm. still stuck on this, like, let's introduce Pierce Brosnan and kill him off. Let's introduce. I mean, what a fucking, what a cheap yeah, way to stupid go. Because and- they, make, they make you care about, they make you kind of start to care about him, but not enough for his death to actually impact anything. Right. It, it, yeah. it, it's not like, you know, when you, when, when you actually, you know, like when, uh, like, like, uh, um, Black Widow dies or something, you, you, you lived with this character for several movies. So you cared about her dying. But this is like, oh, yeah, this guy that I just met 20 minutes ago is dead now. I'll say yeah. this much, though. Controversial opinion time. I cared more about Dr. Fate's death than I did Jane Foster's in Thor, Love, and Thunder. I'll agree with you there, honestly. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I just. Well, I she's in Valhalla. She's okay. Yeah, no, she's good. <laughs> She's good. She's well paid, and she's in Valhalla. Um, yeah. I don't know how I but, felt about Thor, Thor: Love and Thunder. I, I, it definitely was overdone and all the things, but like, you know, I would take a Thor: Love and Thunder over over this. I think any day of the week because I really want to love Black Adam, and I think there's potential there, right? But I think that yeah. they need if they're going to go full rock, if they're going to go full Dwayne Johnson, let him handle it then. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. don't interject six other characters and then kill off Pierce Brosnan. The fuck you doing? You know what I mean? It's like the the reviews for this were all the same. Um, go for the post credit. I mean, and it yeah. wasn't as bad as Venom. You know, let there be fucking CGI, right? It wasn't as bad as that, but it still was in that same vein of like, why? Again, I'm not sure why I'm here in the theater. But at the same time, what Black Adam's problem main main problem is it's just like loads upon loads of exposition dumps like the first 10 minutes is nothing but an exposition dump and then you have the female the female archaeologist played by sarah shahi who's just there to spout exposition yeah i mean what i did love about this uh, and and she's part of this is the idea that you can't be a hero and kill people. And he says, you know, well, I am and I kill people or whatever the fuck the lion is. Don't care. But like, I love that. But even she says his darkness is what allows him to do the things that y'all assholes can. I fucking love that. And that's where the movie shines is it is this. It's not black. It's not white. It's this gray area character. And I love a character like that. Batman is a character like that. And they do never play to that side of Batman. It's always either his guilt over his parents or his need to become. It's never like, shit, should I kill people? I don't know. That's what I love about the Punisher is that he's not a hero. He doesn't want to be. He just wants to kill the bad guys and take them off the board. And so. I love that that idea. I love that this. I do love that this movie played with that a little bit. I just feel like not yeah. enough. I, I yeah, think, and that's I mean, my if, thing too. I, I going back to what I said have, earlier. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they shouldn't have had the 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 uh, Justice Society characters in there at all. No, it would have been a better, more. I mean, I because I, I like character development. Just like give me Black Adam and the people in that in that city, and him trying to save that city and maybe a more developed bad guy exactly yeah because that bad guy was literally thrown together at the end and like the other stuff it's weird because if you did it your way right if you remove the justice society um and you just do you can still have waller you could still have a man uh amelia harcourt you could still have superman at the end all of it works really well for like a frame and the thing is is you you might even be able to toss some other stupid characters in there and have him destroy them or what maybe maybe Waller sends a, a bunch of C-listers right then they get they get some mm-hmm. celebrity cameos that he just rips through them because then you get to see his veracity you get to see his darkness if you're gonna be Black yeah. Adam you gotta earn the fucking name Black Adam and also I will also add if there's a Justice League 
but somehow there was a justice society before, but neither one is mentioned either one. Like, are they <laughs> offshoots of each other? Are we supposed to care? care? I just, I, I never understood these things. Is, is there a farm system? Like, like the justice society is like the Toledo mud hens and the, uh, in the Justice League is the Detroit Tigers. Is it kind of like the ad exactly. or what's going on? I'm confused. Kind of like that. And yeah. that's my main issue with Black Adam. It's trying to be all things to all people. Like, it wants to restore the Snyderverse, but also wants to have, like, this goofy Marvel-style humor that doesn't jibe with Dwayne Johnson wanting to be badass Black Adam, who's, like, turning people into skeletons and putting grenades in people's mouths. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think I think you should allow him the space to explore the darkness. And you know what? Don't have him have some crisis of faith and turn good like he did for a moment. Like Black Adam would never say, I'll say the word, just lock me up. That was really stupid because yeah. that, that was like their feeble attempt to show his humanity. This guy doesn't have the same humanity as you or I or whomever, right? He's a bad dude. And he's gonna go up, and he might save the kid and make and make those like shitty one-liner like tagline jokes. That's all great. That fits within his personality. He still wants to have fun, but him giving up his power, Mister Badass is gonna give up his power because he had a fucking bad day. Get out of here. I just don't. That doesn't work for me. It was like it was like they were trying to do what you just said, but they were trying to do it on such a massive scale. Like, oh, well, we have to check this box. We have to include this moment where he comes to terms with, oh, I'm a bad dude. I, I need to be I should never have this power. And then he gives it up and he comes right back. But this time he's got a cape and gold boots and he's fucking excited. What? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's like a movie written by algorithm. Exactly. exactly. That's exactly what it feels like. Alexa, write me a Black Adam movie. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> also explains Red Notice, too. Oh, God. <laughs> but I'll say this movie. much. Given that given that how hard Pierce Brosnan crushes it, I kind of want to see George Lazenby and Daniel Craig be a part of the DCEU now. Because... We're already two for two with former Bonds and great current DC roles with Timothy Dalton and Doom Patrol and now Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, yeah, this whole thing is... And then just... we should just dig up Sean Connery and uh, Roger Moore and make them do stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... I mean, it know. wouldn't be as creepy as Uncanny Valley <laughs> Skinny Rock. <laughs> that was so weird. weird. Yeah, yeah, that was really Uncanny weird. Uncanny Valley, Skinny Rock can't scare you guys. <laughs> it's pretty terrible. Um, and and I, you know, I heard that they already greenlit a sequel. I'm not sure how much truth there is to that. He really I haven't needs heard to anything. Face off with Shazam eventually. I mean, he's got to. Yeah. yeah. Given that Black Adam is Shazam's big bad, and Dwayne Johnson is like completely avoiding the question of that. It is weird. Speaking it it is which, weird that Shazam they was such that. a better movie. But... I love Shazam unapologetically. <laughs> it's and one I, of my favorites. It's so funny how they go to such great lengths to 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 uh, to disinclude or uninclude Shazam from all Justice League stuff. Mm-hmm. He's never grouped in that same family. Like, there's never been any yeah. posters or even like fan art. They're like, yeah, this is a, fuck that. You know, like it's super weird. So now that we have Cat Cavill back and he's an enormously joyful Superman, what do we do with him next? What's coming? What do you guys think is going to happen? Well, well, if James Gunn is smart, he'd start negotiations with Snyder. Have him finish out his two and three arc to win back the toxic Snyder fans that are whining and moaning about this because mm. James Gunn has been on record stating that he loves Man of Steel that he, Zack Snyder helped him pick a stunt team for Peacemaker and Guardians 3. Like, he needs to, he needs to walk the walk at this point and say, you know what, let's bring elements of the Snyderverse into this. Let's maybe bring in someone who's Snyder adjacent if Snyder can't do Man of Steel 2. Like, Christopher McQuarrie was being floated around and I'm like, fuck yeah, green light that. And of course, Walter Hamada and Toby worked, Emmerich did it. He's already worked with Henry, hasn't he? Yeah, Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Chris, the Christopher McCoy route, I think, is the winning route. I just I just think Snyder is too poisonous because of his legion of yeah. Twitter bots and all the bullshit he threatening people and whatever to get his movie made and all this stuff. I just think that they can't. I don't think they're going to go backwards. And unfortunately, that feels like a backwards thing. I would love to see where his shit went. But I mean, the guy got a fucking four and a half hour violent fucking head chopping thing, uh, which I think is great. Dude, Justice League Snyder Cut stands the fuck up. And to be honest with you, yeah, this the scene between Affleck and Leto is my favorite scene in the whole DCEU. Yeah. Um, so I just hope they just nuke this whole fucking thing and start over with the pieces that work and and they actually make it so it's so it feels like it's earned like get rid of all the extra characters start over i don't know whatever you got to do do it but i just think you know we could also go michael's route we could get a an artificial intelligence powered roger moore and and sean connery uh, we can mix them in with Dwayne the Rock. He could just punch them for an hour and a half, whatever, yeah. back and forth or whatever. Well, we, we could create them with the algorithm somehow. That exactly. Yeah. I also kind of want a Justice Society of America spinoff movie, but leave Adam Smasher far fucking behind because I saw glimmers of a character with Cyclone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the actor that played played her is fucking awesome, and her yeah, character Quintessa, was cool. Quintessa, Quintessa Swindell is her name. Yeah. I looked her up, and I don't know what else she's been in. I think she's like on Euphoria or something or whatever. But right. she's 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 got a like her smile like makes lights up a room sort of thing too. So she's got mm -hmm. that it girl thing. Totally, I think she she's got a definite career ahead of her. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think as far as Cavill goes, like. I think it's time to get weird, man. I think I think we need an appropriate bloodthirsty Lex Luthor. I think we need a fucking bizarro Superman. And I, for God's sake, please go grab who was, whoever was over on fucking Krypton on the show and fucking take the snag that idea for the creepy ass brainiac and bring that to the big screen with a huge budget. I want the like yeah. slurry whispering, you know, you're dying, you're dying. that sort of brainiac. That shit yeah. was fucking awesome, dude. All have right. Him, have him fight for the bottled city. <laughs> All right. So Michael, again, starting with you out of five, what would you give this? I gave this a three. What would you give this? I'm gonna. I mean, I'm not trying to copycat you all the time, but I'm gonna give you a, give it a three too, just because I found it kind of fun if I just turned my brain off. So yeah. And oh, Dustin, boy. how about you? We can do halves, right? Yeah. I'm gonna give this a one and a half. One and a half. <laughs> Fair enough. Like we reversed Thor, <laughs> Love and Thundered that. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, listen, man, I I haven't been to the movies in a while, and I went, you know, almost two nights in a row, um, and saw these two films, Black Adam, Halloween uh, ends, Sorry. and it's like exactly, exactly, I picked a bad time, but you know, um, as a movie <laughs> fan, that you know, you spin the wheel, and sometimes that happens, and yeah, mm -hmm. I, I had fun with Black it's Adam. It's always fun to be in a theater, though, too. It's <laughs> always fun to be in a theater, yeah, and and there's so many other good films coming, and. I'm excited for Black Panther and uh, yeah. everything that comes mm. with that. Dude, That's I'm super, super fucking pumped about Jonathan Majors as Kang. I'm like more excited for him oh, than yeah. I was for Thanos. He's just a fucking badass, dude. And for there's something about him in that role, that powerful conqueror role. The and him about... in Creed 3, I'm like, fuck yeah, shut oh, up yeah, and take yeah. my money. Exactly. He just has that sort of like that that apocalypse now brando thing going on with kang mm -hmm. he's he's like got a lot of stuff coming out too which is like i'm, I'm happy for him because he's such a he's such a intense and i don't know mesmerizing actor i guess so super like, yeah mesmerizing, like yeah. the couple things i saw him and i'm like this dude's a fucking star he's going places and, and I think he might actually know. execute a couple of the Avengers, man, or some close character, or somebody's wife or something. Someone's going to get it before yeah. we get to that Kang dynasty. Hawkeye's and life. I didn't even know he was going to be in Creed 3 until I saw the trailer. I'm like, oh my god, yes. I, this is going to be fucking awesome. Yeah, he's fucking I, I jacked. I have to admit something. I haven't seen Creed 1 and 2. Super good. But, but but seeing the trailer for 3 makes me want to just watch them all now. So, Dude, yeah. they're so good. Watch they're Creed so 1 and good. 2. Stallone yeah, got robbed for Creed 1. Yeah. Fuck yeah. the Academy. 
Do we think Stallone will have a uh, will have a small cameo in Creed Three? No, he's done with a capital D because the producers of the Rocky movies royally screwed him over. Right. And right, he right, both right. said he's retiring the character. He's doing a yeah. TV series now too, so it might take yeah. up some of his time. Are they still doing the fucking Drago spinoff? <laughs> I have no idea on that. But what a bad idea that is. Stallone must have put his foot down on that because I really didn't hear much about that after the fact. That's like what made him lose it. He's like, "Are you serious? You're milking it that hard? Like crazy?" Yeah. yeah the, the, All the, right, Michael. They kind Where of pushed can... it with that. <laughs> All right, Michael. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me either at cullenpark.com or a l l the number two r e e l t o o dot com all two real two dot com uh, to listen to our podcast and we're we're gonna be doing some YouTube videos coming up very soon. Um, short right. we're we're calling them all too quick is what we're calling them. So nice. yeah, yeah. All right. Be sure to like, comment, share, spread the word of New Realms Media. Follow me, on, follow me on all our socials at New Realms Media. And until then, we'll see you next time.